Coming up on this episode of The Paw Report, we're talking about grooming. What do you need to know about introducing your dog to the groomer and how about home care? We'll cover all that with Becky Furry from Furry and Fabulous next on The Paw Report. Production for the Paw Report is made possible by In your Tire and Auto Center in Charleston and Mattoon. In your offers complete auto repair. In your Tire and Auto Center cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. More information at inyurt.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of The Paw Report. I'm your host, Kate Pleasant, and I'm joined today by Becky Furry from Furry and Fabulous here in Charleston. Thanks Hi. for coming, Becky. Thank you for having You're me. You're a groomer, and this is Jasmine and Paco, of course, your yes. dogs that have joined us today. And, of course, they're groomed to the nines, so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad they can make it as well. But first, Becky, do you want to tell me about how you got into dog grooming and animal grooming? Sure. About 15 or 16 years ago for Christmas, my husband surprised me with a Bichon puppy. And so at that time, we took um, Duke, was our dog, we took him to Virginia Bodine, who was the groomer here in Charleston that you took your dogs to. And she decided to retire about a year after I had Duke. And Ellen Johnson, who we all know very well, <laughs> she suggested that possibly I check in to um, dog grooming because I was looking for something else to do while I was staying at home mm -hmm. um, for another business. And I talked to Virginia, and anyway, <laughs> Paco. <laughs> He's just excited He's to excited be here. He's excited to be here. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's not quite sure. Anyway, I started training with Virginia, and I trained with her for about eight months before she retired, and she moved to Arizona, and I started my business then out of my home. Okay, and so when you're talking about dog grooming, what all does that encompass? Well, to me, it encompasses... Um, I guess for a groom, it, it depends whether you have, like Paco, we would call a wash and wear dog who doesn't require. I really like that term, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he really doesn't require a lot of grooming, but he does need grooming. Um, his nails need done. So if he came in, and I do have people that bring in like a dachshund or a chihuahua, something with a short hair, and he does shed very bad. And so they would bring him in to me, and he would get a bath, he would get dried. Um, we would do his ears and we would do his nails. And so that would need to be done on a regular basis because if his nails got long, you know, that would be uncomfortable for him. Someone like Jasmine, if they wanted to keep her in a coat like this, um, she does require daily brushing. I her, can imagine. <laughs> yes, she does. She does not shed though as much as Paco. Okay, and see that's kind of funny to me, you know, because you got this big long haired dog and then the little short haired guy and you said that he sheds more than her. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, if I was to have on black, I would have little pieces of fur absolutely all over me, you know, and hers, it just doesn't, it's just amazing. But she does require a lot of brushing and her hair to keep it up. I started doing this basically from the day we got her, I started putting her hair up so she gets used to it. When it's down, it seems kind of foreign to her. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, when she, if she was to come in, she would also get a bath, she would get blow dry, but her pads get very furry on the bottom. And so for her to be comfortable, especially with winter coming, we need to keep that hair off of the bottom of their pads. On a dog like Paco, he's not gonna have furry pads. So his would need to be trimmed, hers do. Okay, so there's definitely a difference between each kind of dog there. So all dogs are gonna have different grooming needs. Yes, they are. But she would also get her ears done, her nails done. Um, I trim the bottom of her fur. Other breeds like a Schnauzer, um, a Poodle, they're going to need to be clipped on a regular basis. And so dogs like that generally need to be seen probably every four to six weeks. Okay, so that's kind of the average um, with your average grooming needed dog, right? It's four to six weeks? Yes, it is. And my clients and what I've done for the 15 years that I've been grooming is when my clients come in, you know, and I talk to them the importance of it, is having a standing appointment for your dog. It's I've heard other groomers say that, you know, we've had groomers on the show before too, and they say, you know, it's easier if you just go ahead and schedule it all the way out. You don't forget that way, it doesn't get out of hand. Absolutely, what I say is, especially for me, when, when I go to my hairdressers, if I forget to make an appointment, 
I go, okay, I need to make an appointment. And then the next week I go, oh my gosh, I, still I need, need to, to make, make an appointment. appointment. <laughs> and then by the time you get the appointment, all of a sudden it, your dog's in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen. So they really prefer it. My clients come in, if I forgot and I've got busy and don't have their card right when they come in, they're almost in a panic. Where's my card? When's my next appointment? So you need to stay on top of that. You stay on top of it. And what are your recommendations for introducing, you know, a puppy and then a dog to the groomer? I really, if someone is to get a puppy, I think that there are really three important phone calls that I suggest that they make when they get a puppy. And that's as generally about 12 weeks is when you should be getting a puppy. You should call your vet, make an appointment with your vet. You should also call and sign your puppy up for puppy class. And then you need to call your groomer. When someone calls me with a puppy, I spend probably 20 minutes talking with them on the phone and kind of going through some of the basics that they're gonna talk about in puppy class and things that I like to go through that I'm gonna do when they come in. I suggest that they come in and bring me that the puppy, Paco, are you still being silly? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that they bring the puppy to me every couple of weeks just so the puppy gets socialized at the groomers, that it gets used to the sounds. You know, there's a clipper gonna be going, there's gonna be hair dryers going. Um, also the faucet, you know, I have a, my faucet has a sprayer on it. So that's probably gonna be different than they use at home. Right, and there, I assume most, you know, grooming places would have that same kind of faucet. It's a little more powerful maybe, yes. it makes a sound. Yes, and the dryer's gonna be a little bit more powerful probably than just a regular blow dryer that they use at home. Um, and we handle them probably a lot different than their owners do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want to talk to the owners about how to handle their dogs. Um, I brought a couple of things that I suggest that people do. I really like using a towel on a table. And so, you know, you can just take your towel and lay it out. So you'd lay that flat out. And is this any table, like a coffee table or your dining room table or just something? Just basically any table like that, a dining room table. Mm -hmm. um, a coffee table. I would probably not a coffee table. I would prefer um, because I'm a little bit taller. Sure. I would like a countertop. Well, at a groomer, they're going to be up higher, I guess, as well. So. They're going to be up higher. And I just find that it's more comfortable instead of that stooping over, mm -hmm. you know, and then because if you put a towel down or something that your dog, you can stand your dog up and your dog's not going to slip and slide. Right. Okay. It's a good consideration with the slip sliding factor towel. So Absolutely. And that's something that everybody probably has laying around so you could so this is stuff you should try at home then, right? Before you Absolutely. take them to the groomer. And it's just getting them used to it. I suggest also that they play, um, at, at puppy class, they're gonna learn to play with their paws mm -hmm. every day, play with their paws. Play with their ears every day, you know, and just kind of, you don't have to stick your finger really in it, but just kind of play with their ears and say, you know, ears, oh, good puppy, good girl and do it, you know. Making that into a positive yes, experience positive for Yes, positive experience. Dog. You know, and the pause part of that is, is because I'm gonna have to trim that fur off and also their nails. So you really wanna make it a really positive experience. And then afterwards, oh, then we can have a treat. <laughs> <laughs> and what dog doesn't like a treat? I what mean, really? dog doesn't <laughs> like a treat? And they've been sitting here patiently, so I'll give them a little treat. So it kind of goes back to making everything a positive experience, right? Because you, you hear that in basic training as well, is that, you know, anything you want them to associate positively, you know, make it a praise or a reward situation. Absolutely. And if something was to happen bad to them or they've had a bad experience, it could affect them their whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, I have had experiences where possibly someone's come in and had a bad experience, you know, and it takes a long time to work through that with them being really positive, trying to get them to not associate me with that, you know, painful possibly nail experience mm -hmm. or being um, their paws cut or, you know, nicked or something. So you just really have to be patient with them. So is that true too? Sometimes accidents happen just like regular haircuts and things? Accidents do happen. And it's awful when it doesn't happen. <laughs> I can imagine. It just, you know, I've always said when it does, you know, I would rather have cut my finger, or cut myself, or even, I hate to say it, my own dogs almost, just because I feel awful. But it does. It's, it's kind of just a wiggly dog. They're hard to do. And what makes it harder is if someone's dog comes in really matted, that's when something bad can happen. So it's so very important for everybody to keep their dogs really well brushed. Mm -hmm. So is, how often should you be brushing a dog? You know what I mean? Because some dogs you can't brush every day, right? Some dogs you probably, I mean, 
if you're like most mom and dads, you know, and you have children, you're really busy. Mm -hmm. It depends what kind of haircut you want to keep your dog in. If you want to keep a dog in a haircut like Jasmine, you're going to have to dedicate yourself to brushing her once a day. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to dedicate the time to putting her hair up and really doing it. Otherwise, get a dog like Paco. Get a Paco, a <laughs> get wash a and Paco. wear. Get a wash and wear dog. <laughs> um, but if you have a poodle or a schnauzer, you probably don't have to brush them every day, but every few days, and it really does not take long if you do it properly. I also like to take when people come in, I'll go through them. A lot of people think that they're brushing properly and they'll come in and, and I'll say, oh, you know, your dog has some mats right here. And they'll say, well, I've brushed every day. I've I, I really am. And I think that they are brushing but they're not brushing properly. And so what does a proper brushing, you know, what should you be doing? They really, a lot of people will take the brush and they will maybe possibly just skin over the brush mm -hmm. and they'll just go over the top of them. And they'll be thinking that they're That's going- That's getting it done. They're getting it done. What they have to do is get all the way down to her skin. Okay, you so have you to, should be a little more pressure. Maybe. A little more pressure. They probably think that they're hurting them if their dog is wiggling or you know making any sounds, they probably think that they're hurting them. Generally, they're not. Generally, the dog just is acting like they're they don't. A dog. <laughs> they're a dog. They don't want to be. They don't like to be held down or constrained, just like small children don't. <laughs> Absolutely. And I try to tell them, you know, they're they're fine. It's going to be more painful if they get matted. Mm -hmm. And so they need the proper tools. They either this is called a slicker brush. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got it, metal teeth, it looks like It's got like metal there. teeth, and they do look like they can be painful, but they're very soft. Mm -hmm. But those will get down. And this is not what I would use on Jasmine. I would use... Oh, that's like has teeth. This is mm -hmm. more like what they call a pin brush, and it's a little bit longer. Okay. And so it would go all the way down through her. Okay, uh, yeah, because she has the longer hair, so you'd want to make sure and get all Absolutely, the all the, the way through. The slicker brush is going to be great for a mixed breed. You know, a lot of people have like cockapoos um, or a cocker spaniel mm -hmm. or golden doodles. golden doodles. <laughs> a lot of the mixed breeds or poodles, the schnauzers. We do a lot of those, shih tzus, losses. Coarse, more coarse mm -hmm. hair maybe. The slickers are great for those. And then I always recommend that once they're done, they think that they've done a great job with them take your comb and you need a good metal comb. That's where I always find out how good I've done because you get that in there. Then you go through and then you realize. You missed a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you realize that you've missed a few, but this will really help you see what you've got. Mm -hmm. And so I really like people to finish up with a comb. And is it the same for curly haired dogs? You know, I have two Bichons and I usually do mine with a slicker brush, honestly, yes. so. Yes, that's, that's what you should use the on same. them. Okay. I would use a slicker brush and then I would go through them with a comb. Mm -hmm because that's what we do, especially around their faces, because that Absolutely. gets really matted up sometimes if you don't watch that, so. And for like a Bichon and a lot of the white dogs that have tearing problems, mm -hmm. there are a lot of different products on the market that you can get. Um, for the staining. For the staining, and there are a lot of them that are either a natural product or there are products that have a little of a bit of an antibiotic in them. You can get either through your veterinarian or you can get at a pet store, mm -hmm. and that will help with that, but also daily just washing and wiping, that will help a lot with that. Which they don't love either, but no, <laughs> sometimes it has to be done. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times it just has to be done. And are there other things that you can do to get your dog ready for the groomer, you know, aside from just taking them in there every now and then? Should there be things you're doing at home? Really taking your dog and socializing them is really important. Um, and part of puppy class, you're gonna learn that. They're gonna have you take your puppy many different places. I think they even have a checklist of a lot of places that are kind of, you might think, unusual. Mm -hmm. um, but it really does help taking your dog after it's had its immunizations to different places, um, just taking it around, letting people handle it. Getting used to sights and sounds. And sights and sounds. If you have friends that come over, let your friends handle your puppy and let your friends touch your puppy's feet. Mm -hmm. Let your friends touch your puppy's ears. Mm -hmm. And those are all things that get them used to, you know, strangers or eventually a veterinarian or a groomer or something like that. Absolutely. You know, and you want your veterinarian to be a, you know, when they go, it's usually a positive experience. At most veterinarians, you know, they get treats when they're done. And so that's usually a happy place for them. 
we hope. <laughs> well, you, you like it to be at least. We yes, like it and to it be. usually is. But yeah. um, so they say that you know we talked about how different dogs have different grooming needs. So I assume that's something you should consider when picking out an animal. Absolutely, you need to think about whether you want to spend little time, mm -hmm. such as Paco, wash and wear, wash and wear, <laughs> or whether you want to spend a lot of time grooming, um, such as a small breed dog or like a giant breed dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to take a lot of different time too. Mm -hmm. So, and because you have to do it at home, I assume to keep it up, you can't just rely on your groomer every four to six weeks to get everything done that you need. No, um, generally puppies and dogs, if you can do every couple of weeks at home, if you, I do have some clients, their dogs, and one's a Bichon that I can think of, he loves to dig in the yard. Mm -hmm. He loves to dig holes. I think they all do. I do too. <laughs> My Bichons so, dig as well. <laughs> they get really dirty. <laughs> so, you know, you're having to bathe them more often. Mm -hmm. I just really stress that people do not use human shampoo on them. That's a good point. Uh, you really need to be you using. Think, oh, I'll just grab that. I have it. Yeah, that's not a good idea. You need to be using a shampoo specifically for your dog. I use a, a shampoo and a conditioner, and especially during the winter, a conditioner I think is really good. We also get dry in the mm -hmm. winter. Our pets do also. That's a good reminder, you know, think about yourself and your pets are probably experiencing a lot of the same thing. You know, if you're dry, they might be too. So. That's kind of what I feel. I'd actually never thought about a conditioner for a dog, I yeah. guess. You know, and it helps with with a dog, like with her type of hair. Mm -hmm. It keeps, you know, we have flyaway hair. Sure. We don't want her to have a bad hair day either. <laughs> and have fly Jasmine, away. you never have a bad hair day, I'm sure. Oh, no, we would not want her to have a bad hair day. <laughs> So are there other things, you know, um, you shouldn't use human shampoo. That's a good little note. Are there other things we shouldn't be doing when we're doing home grooming? Something else I guess that we you can do, um, there are products on the market also that you can get for ear cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, there's an ear powder that is available um, on the market. There's different brands. There's also ear cleaners that you can use. And I recommend that you can use a cotton ball. So you can just... Um, is that often? Do you have to clean their ears, you know, once a week or a month or? It, different breeds at different times. Mm -hmm. um, like with Paco, his ears stand up, so they probably maybe don't get quite as dirty. A little more ear, air in there, I guess you'd say. Yes. A dog, what we call with floppy ears, mm -hmm. and especially like a, a golden retriever or if it's a swimming dog, mm -hmm. you really need to pay close attention. Um, Cocker Spaniels that can harbor bacteria their ears if they've been swimming okay so you need to pay close attention to that but even with her ears you know they get really hairy on the inside right and so A when she dogs do they do and so with the groomer i would trim that out and in i ask my clients if they have a preference because different veterinarians some do yeah they either want them plucked mm -hmm. some vets prefer that their animals be cut out mm -hmm. and so i ask the client you know what they prefer and then I, you know, go along with what they want. Um, but by using the powder at home, it will help you, you know, if you need to pull any of those loose hairs out, that helps you, it allows you to do it. And then if you were to use the liquid, you would put it on the cotton ball. Don't squeeze it. Not in it. the ear. Don't okay. squeeze it. Who wants a cold liquid poured in your ear? Oh, that's a good point. That could be kind of traumatic, especially to a puppy. Um, and you could even, if you wanted to, you could warm, put this in a glass of warm water to warm it up, especially in the winter. That's a good tip. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it might mm -hmm. make it feel a little bit better. Who mm -hmm. wants cold liquid? Yeah, nobody really. I've, nobody. We I don't, don't think, like it either, so I, I can't imagine a dog would. <laughs> especially, you know, we don't want to traumatize a puppy, especially. Right. So, um, but that's a necessary thing, keeping their ears clean, just like people. De definitely. I don't really recommend using Q-tips if you don't know what you're doing with the yes. dog. It's, um, I'm always scared about that, that I'm going to poke something in there or hurt something that I shouldn't be touching. So Absolutely. So what I recommend is probably just stay with the cotton balls. You can tear your cotton ball. If you've got a smaller dog, you can tear it in half. You don't have to use the whole one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a big dog, you might need a couple. <laughs> um, you know, in the, like with Paco, it's easy to get down in his ears to clean. Um, but if you have to, you could use the Q-tips. Some dogs have a lot of little um, crevices. Mm -hmm. And if they're really dirty, that's okay. Go ahead and put some of the cleaner on a Q-tip. 
but don't go down into the ear canal by any means, but it's okay to use it up here. Mm -hmm. Well, I assume too, if you don't keep them clean, they can get yeast infections and things like that in their ears. They can get all sorts of bad things mm -hmm. in his, their ears and we do not want that. What about nail clipping at home? I mean, is that something you should do or can do? Or, you know, I know a lot of people are scared to take that on themselves because that first time you get a dog cl too close to the quick, it's, it's kind of a traumatic experience for dog and people. You can do it at home. Um, but if you're, you do clip your dog, it can cause the dog to be really traumatized. Mm -hmm. So unless you're really sure of what you're doing and you have the proper tools, I personally would recommend that you call your veterinarian or your groomer mm -hmm. to do it. Um, if you're gonna do it at home and you're really comfortable with it as a puppy, I would recommend that you do one nail a day you know, let's not traumatize them, do it before a feeding. Mm -hmm. So that way they're gonna associate something really good's gonna happen that they'll think, oh. oh. Again, bringing it back to making it Absolutely. a positive experience. Absolutely, make it right? a positive experience. Absolutely. Are there any tips, you know, I mean, should you hold them while you cut or is it just kind of a walk up and cut them or? <laughs> Probably you could, I would try to hold them on your lap, especially with the puppy. It might take two people. Mm -hmm. You could do them if they're tiny or they're young you know, do them while they're asleep. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you can get more than one nail done while they're asleep, go for it. Um, you know, like right now, you might be able to sneak in and get a couple done. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Paco's pretty comfortable there. I know, so. I think they're pretty comfortable now. <laughs> so is it the kind of thing, if you do cut your puppy's nail or your dog's nail at home, is, are there home remedies or should you have, I know there's gels and things on the market for that. What do you recommend? Well, I would recommend that you buy a professional, pro you know, have a product, a Mm-hmm. Um, like a styptic kind of thing to yes. stop the stop the blood. Yes, it's mm -hmm. to stop the bleeding. Okay, so have that on hand maybe in case you do. I think get I the would nail. just in case if you're gonna take it on at home. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, like you said, check with your veterinarian or your groomer because absolutely uh, you guys have done a few nails. Over yes, your absolutely. Time, so. And a lot of groomers are. I mean, a lot of um, veterinarians I know don't even require appointments. You can um, either just call ahead or go in and have your, the nails yeah. done. So, how often do you have to trim a dog's nails? Is it different by breeds or? Um, I would probably say about every four weeks mm -hmm. is probably about what I would suggest because it's kind of like if you let them get too long, the quick in their nail also grows out. Okay. And so then when you try to clip that, it makes it, it's easier to bleed. Oh, okay. And so then I have to have clients, if a client comes in that maybe hasn't come to see me before and their dog's nails extremely long, what I have to have them do is come in every couple of weeks until we can kind of push that quick back so we just gradually have to do it. And what I do in my shop also is I do nail grinding. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd recommend someone at home really to do it, but I do it at, at my shop. And what that does is I'll clip it and then I can grind the nail and that allows me to push it back a little bit farther. Okay. And so it also makes it where the nail's not so sharp. So that's another option for that is another <laughs> option. working on nails as well. Absolutely. So. Okay, well, is there anything else, you know, we're kind of winding down a little bit on time, but is there anything else you'd recommend, you know, as far as getting, taking your dogs to the groomer, getting them familiar or grooming at home? Um, gosh, I guess just, I would really think about, you know, the three things that we talked about, mm -hmm. you know, when you get your puppy, you know, make sure that we do that, call your groomer, think about the expense, mm -hmm. you know, when you're picking out a breed, Always a good idea. You know, because it, <laughs> it, it is, because a lot of people think, oh my gosh, you know, they'll look at a dog like Jasmine or some different breeds and they think, oh gosh, I want one of those. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that. They're it, really cute. You get that a lot. That's a really cute dog, but they don't think about. They don't think about. her every day. And that she's going to need to be brushed every day, that she would need to go to a groomer. You know, a dog like her, probably if I wasn't a groomer, she would need to be at a groomer probably, I would guess every two to three weeks to keep her in this kind of shape. You know, and that's gonna cost at least $32, $35 every time that she's going. You know, the bigger dogs are gonna be more expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that can cost hundreds of dollars a year for someone to have a dog on top of their feeding, their veterinarian bill. So people really need to stop and think about what kind of breeds that they're picking out. All right, well, Becky Furry from Furry and Fabulous, thanks for coming on and talking about basic grooming for your dogs and puppies. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us. And thank you out there for watching. Did you know full episodes of The Paw Report are on YouTube? They can be accessed at www.youtube.com slash WEIUTV. 
Then just go to the Paw Report playlist and select the episode you want to see. More information about the show is also available 24-7 on our website at weiu.net under the Television tab. First thing you probably want to do if your pet has swallowed something you didn't want them to is to call your veterinarian or an emergency line. There are some products that are pretty hazardous to animals and we'll want to try to make them vomit, uh, which you can do at home um, when directed to. You can use hydrogen peroxide, but you only want to do that if it's recommended because there are things like we've had a dog get into bleach before and you do not want them to vomit that back up because there's more chance of it causing harm. So depending on what they swallowed, uh, you may be directed to either make them vomit, bring them in, or possibly contact a poison control if we're not as familiar with the medication or the, the item that they may have ingested to know if it would cause a problem or not. So those are some really good resources, but definitely contact your vet to know if it would even be a problem. Production for the Paw Report is made possible by... In Yurt Tire and Auto Center in Charleston and Mattoon. In Yurt offers complete auto repair. In Yurt Tire and Auto Center cares about our community and thanks you for being a responsible pet owner. More information at inyurt.com. <laughs>